Okay guys, so um, today I'm going to be working on some of the roughs for 7 inch Kara chapter 6 and um, as you can see I have my blue lines already printed out and I've already drawn my panel borders. Um, I have blown up and corrected my, uh, <laughs> my thumbnails digitally in Photoshop, but you can use any graphics program that you like. I had intended to use um, Manga Studio to lay out guidelines, and I'll probably do that in the future. I may even end up doing it in this chapter, um, but the way I usually like to work is uh, I'm a lazy, lazy person, and I like to work, um, I like to knock out all of the easy panels first in one day or over a weekend, especially if I'm like at a con that isn't going very well, so I have a lot of time to kill, or if I'm taking my car in, or if I have doctor's visits, like that's the perfect thing to work on. Um, because when I go through and do a page at a time, it makes me feel like I've already accomplished something, having one or two panels per page already knocked out. And I mean, that's, it's all psychological, but it really helps. So I tend to go ahead and knock out the panels that are um, that don't require perspective and only have one or two characters or a face shot. And I am sketching in Kara's body with um, a Pilot Color Eno mechanical pencil filled with Pilot Color Eno lead in soft blue and um, I'll provide a link for you guys you can get it in a couple places you can get it on jet pins but you're gonna have to pay shipping um, and you can get it on Amazon I think you can get it with Prime but I'm not sure uh, and uh, you can sometimes find free shipping And I like getting it from Amazon because I have Amazon gift cards, so it's a little bit cheaper for me. So if you have an Amazon gift card that um, you're looking to spend, you can get this lead with it. I think you can get the you can get all of the colors of Pilot Color Eno you know, lead, and you can even get the mechanical pencil. And um, I used to use this in a metal drafting pencil like this, this one here, which is a um, it's a Pentel Graph Gear, I want to say 1000, but it started to really eat up my hand. Like it would literally cause abrasions on my skin because I was drawing so much for conventions. Um, so I just switched to a pencil that's a little less sturdy and more prone to breaking, but doesn't wreck my wrist. So in this panel, uh, this is the first official page of chapter six and Kara has just woken up, and she's woken up really excited, but she has um, a little bit of bed hair. And as you can see, I've roughed in her figure. Um, I've actually pulled it in some. Although I might actually erase all of it and pull back out. And um, to erase, I'm using a variety of erasers. I'm using this Pentel Click Eraser, which again, you can get on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. You can also find them um, at most big box stores. So you can get it at Walmart, you can get it at Target, you can get it at pretty much any office supply store. Um, I actually don't know too many art supply stores that sell it, which is a shame because it's great if you do illustration or graphic arts. It doesn't tear up your paper and it erases pretty cleanly. And you can also buy refills for it so you're not just um, throwing away the plastic holder. I get mine, again, on Amazon, and I can link that for you guys as well. I was working on a comic artist holiday gift guide, and I might resume that, but, I mean, finger, can't type. I can record, though, and I can draw to an extent, so...
and um, I have no real problem with erasing the an entire image um, because I want the pages to be as good as they possibly can be. So if that requires erasing things a couple times, that's just the way it is. Oh, unfortunately for me, this desk is so high up, it's actually really painful to draw at. My chair got broken one weekend. I had friends visiting. <laughs> it was on its way out anyway, so it's not their fault. But it got broken when one of my friends sat in it, and it won't go up anymore. I'm replacing it soon, but I haven't replaced it yet. So this is called, I may end up like getting a pillow or something, a donut, just to, and as you can see, I'm heavy handed and uh, pencils tend to snap a lot when I'm, they're in my hands. Also, uh, these colored leads are very soft, which is fine because they don't cut into the paper necessarily. And the rough isn't the definitive end-all be-all. Sometimes I make a lot of changes and may even redraw entire panels or pages um, after I send it to people for critique. And I find sending my comic at all, having other people critique my comic at all stages is a really valuable um, tool, really valuable technique, whatever you want to call it because um, I just value fresh eyes and I value fresh perspective. I tend to get too close to my own projects, so I fear that sometimes I can't make the most objective decisions about them. And see, I've already lost the blue line that I had done underneath, so I might have to go get my pencils to see what I had done. Let me zoom in. Gonna have to remember to look up before I move on. And chapter six is the second chapter of book two. Book one is already out. You can find it in my online store. Uh, you can also find it on Amazon. It is a full watercolor comic, so that means even though these pages are in pencil, the pages that get that I'm going to print are um, all watercolor, and that's pretty time consuming. But since I am working on a video series for you guys about all showing all stages of me working on the comic, you will probably see me working on the watercolor. And Kara is excited this morning because she just woke up and it's a brand new day and she thinks she's going to go visit her human friend again. So um, now that I have the blue line sketch finished, I'm going to go over it with graphite and I like to use a softer graphite because it marks darker and my scanner can pick it up better. Um, and that helps for some of the digital corrections I do. Unfortunately, drawing directly on the glass top with nothing underneath it is not easy on the wrist either. I also move my paper around a lot to get the best, the angle that's best for my wrist. Since I do so much drawing, I have to do what I can to ensure that I'll be able to keep doing so much drawing. Which may mean putting a pad of paper underneath this or something. And 
I printed these blue lines out on my um, desk jet, I guess it is. It's um, a Canon, right? It's a Canon PixMug Pro 9000, which is very popular among comic artists and convention artists. Mine's dying. I had to auto feed all of these sheets, so it's probably time for a new one. Probably the same kind, because I actually really liked it. And I recently bought a laser jet to do, um, like, better stickers, waterproof-ish stickers. And a few other things. I'm excited because it means it uses toner, and that means I can get a Heidi Swap mint, or mink, I think it's a mink, um, and do gold fo foiling which seems pretty cool to me. And I'm sorry if me twisting the paper gives you guys a little bit of vertigo. Um, if this is a problem for you, I assume it will be a problem in videos that are sped up. But this is at speed right now. Um, if this is a problem for you though, please comment and um, I can't, I'm not going to minimize it because I'm doing it to spare my wrist, but I will try to find something, some sort of compromise that works for both of us. See, she's pretty dang cute, isn't she? Those of you who are unfamiliar with my work, I do uh, children, comics for kids, specifically little girls. Um, and the current comic I'm currently working on is Seven Inch Kara, which is about a little girl who's only seven inches tall meeting humans for the first time. It's all watercolor. The first volume is already out and available in my shop. Um, my, I like to, I don't, I don't really, I'm not a big fan necessarily of what's being produced for kids, especially for little girls right now. I did my master's thesis, thesis when I graduated SCAD on, um, how like page composition affects reading comprehension and so I read a lot a lot over a hundred children's comics and something there are exceptions but overwhelmingly uh, people's idea of a strong or well-written female character is give her a gun you know and I being female I'm like nope nope it means having agency and the ability to make your own decisions and take responsibility for your own actions and um, not just being there to react to someone else's choices. Gun has nothing to do with it. And I know that's not all kids comics, but it seems like so many of them are predicated upon small, uh, a young woman goes out and kicks butt. Uh, how she kicks butt is up to you, but that's like the, the theme, that's the, the overarching uh, trait of comics that feature a female protagonist, and that's fine. I know <coughs> a lot of people who really enjoy that. I know of a lot of great comics that use that to its benefit, and I think it's important for young women to have that, but I wanted to make something that wasn't that. Um, because I don't necessarily think, um, I just feel like there's something kind of missing. And um, I grew up watching a lot of Ghibli movies, and I really like how he handles his female protagonists. So I wanted there to be more of that for American, like specifically for American children, or Western children. 
All right, being a cheapskate, looking for other super easy panels to draw. And I'll probably carry these pages around with me wherever I go for like the next however long and just, um, hang on. And just focus on filling in those easy panels until they're all finished and then I'm gonna do one page a day no matter what. So I went and got, let me pull out, I went and got my sketchbook, one of them, which has all of the outfits planned out. These tabs on the side say what day, what outfit, what character. And since we're on day one, Kara's gonna be wearing this outfit. And I was kind of thinking red, because I don't draw her in red very often. <coughs> I try, <coughs> sorry. I try to keep Kara in very um, neutral, natural colors. Um, although I do like to mix in bright colors every now and then because she is a kid. But I wanted her to have a more earthy color palette and Naomi to have her human friend to have a very bright color palette. And it's sort of like the, so Naomi wears a lot of clothes that are um, like maybe made from synthetic fibers or use synthetic dyes because she's a human and she has access to that and that's a very popular thing for human <laughs> girls in America to wear. Um, so I wanted that to be her thing and I wanted Kara's thing to be um, more practical clothing. So a lot of pants, pantaloons, um, that kind of stuff. I wanted to keep their wardrobes distinct and to also imply personal choice. So even though I'm not drawing her full outfit right now, um, your prop because I figure you're going to see at least some of the outfit, some of what she's wearing, I needed, I wanted to make sure it was consistent. And I don't like how, how tilted she is in this panel, but that's something I can very easily fix in Photoshop later on. So I'm not gonna worry about it right now. And I, for roughs, I pretty much always block everything in. I want things to be as tight and consistent as possible. So um, I have minimal redrawing to do before I watercolor. I mean, if I, if I have to, if it's important or something is kind of broken or something's really wrong or I've just had a way better idea, I'll fix it, but. I really don't like how Dutch this, this how Dutch Kara is in this panel. Yeah, I'm gonna erase. For more detailed erasing, I like to use these small mono erasers by Tombow. Um, I can show you. This one has a rectangular tip, and this one has a very fine circular tip, um, and it's prone to um, wiggling and breaking off. So, yeah. I heard my phone buzzing. There it is. It is going to annoy me. So just keep that in mind, that it's very prone to breaking. And I'm also using um, a drafting brush just to remove excess uh, pencil shavings from my drawing paper. Oh, and I'm just penciling this on like cheap, cheap, cheap Office Max brand copier paper. I'm really not picky about, um, I mean, it's not my favorite drawing surface, but I do so many comic pages, I can't. I have to I have to be picky about where I spend my money, so um, 
I prefer to use good paints and decent paper. Which I will talk about in depth later, but I use uh, Canton Montval, which isn't the greatest paper. I'm not saying that, but it performs consistently for watercolor pages. I can run it through my printer. It takes the watercolor as well. It's cost effective. You know, there's a lot of reasons why I use it, even though it isn't necessarily the best. I mean, my favorite paper is Arches, and I do a lot of my additional illustrations, or I do commission illustrations often on Arches. But Arches is not good for comic pages because it's very hard. It's so absorbent that it's hard for me sometimes to pull fine detail the way I can kind of just draw on the mont the Canson mont ball. It's a lot better. Oh yeah, here I am drawing on the pad again. And you act, you don't really have to have these materials to make a comic. When I was younger, I used to do my comics on uh, cardstock with regular graphite and uh, I'd ink with, uh, I think, Zig Millennial pig pens, which my Walmart at the time carried. And I mean, my drawings were horrible, but you can make a com comic with pretty much, I mean, you could just do it in your sketchbook. It doesn't. It is not the fine feathers that make the comic fine. The fine feathers do help make the comic fine. <laughs> if you know how to use them, the non-photo blue does help. The drafting brush does help. The software that I use to make these into blue lines and to make digital corrections and this tablet pen I use those all help but they don't make the comic in some ways they've made me a better artist they've um, allowed me to take some shortcuts that speed up production time on something that would otherwise be a monumental task oh But, I mean, if you can't afford those things, you can still make comics. And you should still make comics, especially if you enjoy it. Because the only way you can get better at making them is to make them. That sounds... I know that sounds like trite advice, but it's true. I was looking at some of my comics from when I was like 15, 16 the other day. I was actually posting them on Twitter with the whole anybody can improve sort of vibe because I was horrible. But I mean, I had some decent comic decisions. I just, my execution was poor and my blocking was the wrong way. And I was trying so hard to be a mangaka. I wanted it so bad. And now I just want to make good comics for American and Canadian children. That's all I want. And this comic is set in Louisiana in a slightly fictionalized Hanville, which is kind of where I grew up. It's where my mom grew up, and it's set in the house my mom was raised in because that house was a really cool house that my grandfather designed. Um, and it's just slightly fictionalized Hanville because I added a school where there is no school and I actually for all I know they've been doing so much building and growing it's almost where I said the school was um, but yeah it's a place that I love that doesn't always love me back
but I think I think the best comics are ones that are true or personal or real for you. Like they can be fictional stories. I don't do autobio at all. Um, but a lot of the character interactions are things from my real own life. Um, a lot of the reactions are from people I know. And I actually, um, I'm drawing the eyebrows through her hair. And that's, uh, that's not going to be like that in the comic, the f finished comic. I just want to be able to see the eyebrows when um, I'm drawing the page again. Well, penciling the page. I don't want them to get lost. I might need to pull out on this panel a little bit and I'll do that I think digitally I know I said I was gonna rotate the panel digitally but it really it was bugging me so much that I knew it was gonna bother me later and not bother me in a good way like oh yeah remember to fix this but like ugh, just look at it and cringe I really have to go get a pillow this is gonna ruin my back for the next two days. Okay, let's see. Oh, that might help. But as soon as my booty flattens that pillow, I'm gonna be in the same position I was in. okay to break the panel lines especially on um, kind of exterior panels like this if you need to break the panel lines on a little panel like this one what you can do is you can put post-it notes along the edges uh, I don't have any good ones at my desk right now which is unusual because I usually have lots of post-its I need to refill it but you can put like post-it notes around it or you can tape white paper around it and I'm gonna be doing that for the more complex pages anyway and I may later I may have to do the post-it thing I was just telling you guys and um, although I'm not working from any photo reference right now there's no shame in working from photo reference good artists do use reference don't let somebody tell you otherwise don't let them tell you it's copying or it's cheating I mean you should change it to fit your the situation but I mean lots of really good comic artists take pictures of, them, of themselves or their significant other or their kid or their cat in <laughs> sorry my own cat in the background is getting into trouble um, for reference for their pieces for their their comic panels so um, I mean not everybody shows that not everybody shares that so it's kind of like a well if I don't know if so-and-so isn't doing it I'm not gonna do it but please use reference if you need reference there are lots of great um, reference sites uh, I like to do my warm-ups with Senshi stock and she recently had a Kickstarter to raise money for um, more stock images and more um, to improve the app she has. And like, I mean, that head is too big. Anyway, I backed her Kickstarter, so there should be even more good stuff from her. Fight, I mean, she does like fighting poses and wounded poses and magical girl poses, so there's a lot of stuff to pick from. Sorry, my cat's kind of bad. Well, kind of needy of attention when it is not. <laughs> Not a good time for me to give it to him. Anyway, that's a great resource to start with. I 
just I just know that there is some some talk amongst younger artists that reference his cheating and uh, this is not new when I was a younger artist people would say that using reference was cheating um, I wish that stupid fallacy would just die already because it's not helping anybody it's hurting a lot of people and preventing them from improving or utilizing the resources they really need to make the work they could be making all because somebody feels insecure about their own ability okay so I like her arms but I don't like her head because it should be more sulky Still a bad situation. I can't wait until I get a new chair. When I'm not recording, I like to draw on the floor with a piece of gator board as a hard surface. And people are like, you're gonna wreck your back. But I find sitting at this table drawing for long periods of time wrecks my back. Markers aren't so bad, but drawing is really hard on my shoulders. I am, however, not encouraging you guys to like sit on the floor and wreck your back. I've been doing it since I was like, I don't know, a very, very young child. So my bad habit is pretty, pretty set in there. But if you haven't yet developed this bad habit, please don't. Please don't justify it as, well, that's what she does because I am telling you it's bad. If you guys see anything in this video and you have a question about it, please comment and let me know. I will either respond to your comment with another comment or I will do a video addressing it if it's something I think needs demonstrating. Or I may link you to something else I've done that answers your question. Oh, I don't like her bow. I'm going to fix that. And while I'm thinking about it, this is um, right now, it's going to be a webcomic when it's all finished, but because it's watercolor and it takes a really long time, I wanted, I didn't want people to have to wait half a year to get another chapter because my life got busy. Um, so I said I was going to finish it all and then release it online. It is currently available um, in print partially as a way to help offset the costs of making it, but also because, I don't know, I feel like a, I go to shows and sometimes people will give me a lot of sh shade. They'll be like, oh, well, I guess you're not really making anything then. And it's like, excuse you, just because I can't post it online doesn't mean I'm not making anything. You've just forgotten. So having a physical book is nice. H gives me something of mine to sell at cons, not just fan art or prints. I'm not really big into either of those personally. I like originals and those take time to make, so as do comics.
don't think there's anything wrong with prints, by the way. I just, they're not, I don't enjoy making them. I feel like if I'm going, it, it takes me a while to do anything with a background, and I feel like if I'm going to do something that's going to take me a, with uh, take a lot of effort to make it look good, I might as well do something of my own. And at that point, I'm like, well, can I use this for the book I'm working on, or is it just like a thing that, other than prints and other than the original, it's not really going to make much of a difference in my life. That's also why I do so much Kara stuff, is so I can include it in the book. Or at least I have the option of including it. It's relevant to the book. When I'm done with this video today, I have to go pack up my, um, Small Business Saturday and Cyber Monday orders. This video probably won't go up until much later in December though, if December at all, because I have a backlog of videos to edit, like 20 of them. It's pretty much gotten to the point where if I'm going to like do a field test for a product, I'm just going to record it because taking all of those photos is a pain in the butt and then writing all of that script, all that text is a pain in the butt. It takes a really long time. It takes longer than recording and editing a video. And another thing, not all comic artists have the same process that I have. Um, some are able to like get what they want done in ink the first time. So they have very little uh, preparation. It takes me several steps to get where I'm going. So um, I guess it's like the difference between flying and driving, right? I'm walking. I'm walking very slow, but I'm still walking. I'm still moving forward. I'm still making stuff. Um, and there are people who enjoy walking, so I hope they enjoy the thing I walked. <laughs> Maybe I hope they enjoy walking with me as a better. And some people prefer to fly, and they can get there much quicker, but they don't get to see as much along the way. So, I mean, really, it's important that you find the comic process that lets you make the things you want to make. And if you need to do what I'm doing and only fill in the lazy panels at first, that's cool. Because at least you're making something. Shoot, I gotta check and see what day this is, but I have a feeling this is day two. I'm gonna pull out so you guys can see. So I also have the days marked on the my pages so I know. No, I guess that's, which one is it? this one? That's still day one, okay. So I know when to change outfits. <laughs> Cause I'm not gonna remember and I don't necessarily wanna have to check to rifle through my script every time when I've already drawn when I've already drawn thumbnails. So it's easier just to have, for me, it's easier just to have these things marked out separately. Another thing, when I'm drawing figures, I try to sketch them in as um, kind of fluid and cartoony as I can because they're going to end up getting s much stiffer as I refine things. So I try to make them loose to start off with. Because if you start with um, tighter stuff, it's going to end up getting very stiff. 
And see how I'm drawing outside of the panel to get the gesture that I need? That is totally fine. Um, we had just talked about that. If that's something you need to do, you need to do it. Don't don't feel weird about about doing it. I probably need reference for this arm, the hand gesture. We'll see. If I can do it without reference, I'll do it. And if I need reference, I'll have to like move on to a different illustration. It's like, her, oh, her hands are like clasping each other because she's making excuses. And I'm going to start by just roughing it in for right now. I need to see, just by roughing it in, I can tell that I need to pull one of the hands back a little bit to make room for the fingers that are curled up. And um, if you're interested in learning how I construct anatomy for my comics, I have a couple of posts on my blog, and I also have a very old video tutorial, and I can do a new one if you guys would like. You just need to let me know, like through comments or through email, and I'll try to get on that. Uh, if there's content you want to see, the only way I can know is if you guys tell me can't read your mind. I'm trying to guess. I'm also trying to make the kind of content I would want to see or the kind of stuff that isn't necessarily super prevalent on YouTube. I'm also uh, trying to make, with doing all of the marker videos I've been doing, I'm trying to do them to supplement the, my blog. And this will actually, this is actually part of a post. Oh, her arms are too long because they're longer than the torso, but I could make the torso bigger. Cheat, cheat, cheat. And I need to make the head bigger to go along with it. Oh, because I like those hands and arms enough. I like them enough that <laughs> I don't want to have to restage them because I have a feeling it might not work as well. Now I'm kind of running out of things to talk about because I am super hungry. I was going to do this video and then, wow, it's been 46 minutes already. How many have I drawn? Like just three, right? Dang, I'm slow. I was going to go eat some lunch after doing this video. I think I might make it an hour. I don't have to draw every, every panel for you guys although it does kind of keep me honest because it's like well I gotta go record a video oh her arms are still too long I'm oh, gonna erase the pencil because I wasn't thinking I, you know I could have and I should I ought to start blocking in the borders with like a micron really ought to that's a thing I should think about Anyway, it keeps me kind of honest because it's like I can't really justify uh, messing around, getting distracted, looking at like YouTube or uh, Twitter or Facebook when I'm on video with you guys. So it's like focus work and uh, <laughs> I chat the whole time so it makes it feel like it's not taking so long even though I end up with a sore throat and thirsty. I need to be better about having water to drink while I'm working on this stuff. I used to live stream uh, working on comic pages, this stage of working on comic pages. 
and uh, my mom watched one and she said it's boring like watching paint dry so I apologize if you guys are not don't aren't getting anything out of this um, however you did click to watch a video on comic process and I am showing you comic process and I am talking about comic process so oh that's really cute I'm sorry I think my own child is cute People keep saying I look like Kara, and oh, is she supposed to be you? No, she's my fictional child. That is what she is. So she's not me. She's a f <laughs> she's a fictional child. Actually, when I was developing Kara, my thought process was, I really want to write this kid who doesn't have any of my anxieties or any of my hang-ups. She's just like this happy, kind of naive, homeschooled little girl. Mostly happy, mostly naive. The whole story is about her having her first adventure and kind of dealing with the consequences of choices that may have been made a little rashly. There are no guns, there are no lasers, there are no pew pews, although there is kitty cat riding. So, you know, if like that's your thing, you should totally read my comic because there's going to be cat wrangling. Something else um, I see a lot of artists do is um, they'll redraw. So as you as you learn how to draw, as you make your comic, you're going to improve, right? Like you're putting the time in, you're getting feedback from people, you're making different choices. You're going to improve. That's part of the cycle of making things. Um, and a lot of artists I know, when they get about 100 pages in, they're really good. And they look back at like their first chapter and they're like, oh, this is awful, I'm going to redo it all. And then they spend the next two years playing catch up because there's always going to be a chapter you think needs to be redrawn. And I promised myself I was just going to keep moving forward because I just wanted to finish. I just want to finish the comic. I just want to finish the project. Um, if when it's all finished I need to redraw some things or rewrite some things, well, then it is what it is and I'll do it but I'm not going to stop midway through the project to redraw some stuff. I would honestly rather put a new chapter in or a prologue or whatever, which I know is many consider that to be kind of a crutch. But I mean, things change. As you write your story, you learn more about your characters. You become better. You make, you realize you would have made different choices. So that is an option other than just completely scrapping what you've done and redoing it. I bring this up because a couple years ago I was at a show and this guy, completely unsolicited, is at my table. Like he is invited, actually Heidi invited him behind the table. I wish she hadn't done that because he was pretty much a vampire. Um, and he's like flipping through my stuff and he's like, well the later chapters are so much better than the first chapters, you should redo it. And I was just like, no. Um, and he was like, you're just being lazy, you're afraid to put in the work. And it's like, mm, yes, because if I was afraid of putting in the work, I totally would do a watercolor comic. Yes, that is so sexy. That's such a sexy choice right now. It makes me so hireable. I didn't say that. I was just like, okay, I'll take that into consideration, but I'm probably not going to do it. Because I, <laughs> I try to be very non-confrontational at cons. I tried to be non-confrontational in general, but like I had already, I'd already thought about my improvement, and I'd already 
thought my first chapter especially looks different from the rest and I'd already decided for myself that I was just gonna roll with it. Because you can get caught in this cycle where you're always fixing the last chapter you did and you're not necessarily making new work. And I would rather I'd rather just make new work. That's like people who ask if I'm gonna pitch Kara to companies and I say and I'm I I'm six chapters in, I'm over a hundred pages of watercolor deep. Uh, <laughs> at this point, if somebody was willing to take it the way it was, I would totally go with it. But I would rather pitch something new and us work together to make something that fits up, that fits what they have in mind, rather than try and shoehorn something I've been working on and something I've paid for out of my own pocket into their vision, you know? I'd rather just give them a clean slate. We can do something similar, but I'm not gonna do the same thing. So, one of the benefits of um, drawing outside of the panel when you can is when you scan it, if you decide you want to, to sh shrink this down, to pull out, um, you have the guidelines so you can sketch that in quicker instead of trying to just figure it out from scratch. We're coming up on an hour here. And there's quite a few I could do. This is a, this is like a big chapter. This is a 33-page watercolor chapter. Uh, I think I might call it it for this video. Oh, here's another one, but I think I'm gonna do that not on video, not in front of you guys. Um, not because it's hard or whatever, I don't know, but because I'm really hungry and it's been an hour, I feel like I have, um, I've tested your patience enough with drawing non-complicated panels. I'm sure you guys get the gist. Very lazy panels, maybe. So I'll show you guys something else. So I keep my, my pages clipped and the ones that I've already worked on or can't work on are in the back. I want to keep them in order. Ooh, see? You can see where me drawing on top of my pad of paper has caused some, some problems. And I keep this in a folder that has my thumbnails. It's got, oh, I should, I should try and stay current. These are Naomi pages, so they go in the back. so you guys can, sorry, you guys can actually see what I'm doing in case you care. Okay, all right, so these are my thumbnails. They're getting a little dirty, but that doesn't matter because they're already scanned. I am only using them for like notes. So it has my thumbnails. It has notes that other artists have given me. It's got my script with my the illustrations and I did a video on that and it's got scrap paper that I'm going to be using uh, on my roughs later on I wish I'm not gonna tear pages out of my sketchbook but I wish it had copies of I should have maybe printed out um, all of the outfits that I picked for this chapter um, but it doesn't, so I have to <laughs> have to haul those sketchbooks out. And, oop. Yeah. So for me, because I do so much comic work, I do so much illustration, it's really important that I have folders. And this one, somebody, someone, not me, spilled food all over my binder because it was out. 
they're at my desk. Um, it's important for me to have my chapters labeled by, yeah, by chapter, and I keep them, I have a green file organization thing that hangs up next to my desk, and I put the chapters from the book prior in like a, a file cabinet, so um, I know where they are, but they're not out. And like I said, my sketchbook is organized by character day for the outfits. So there's Kara, there's Kara day two, there's her mom for day one, her mom day two, there's her dad day one. And they're just rough sketches just so I know what, have an idea of what the character is wearing. Where's Naomi day one? There's Naomi day one, and because it's set in southern Louisiana, I try to dress her in very comfortable, cool clothing, but not anything too revealing because she's 14. So that would not be a good idea. Oh, that's Kara again. So this is the outfit she's going to wear on the cover. And then this is the outfit she wears when she shows up again. So yeah, I will check back in with you guys with more comic progress later. If you guys haven't, I would really appreciate it if you check out my comic, 7-Inch Kara. It's, on my, it's for sale on my website, natosoup.com slash products, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot com backslash products. Um, I'd also appreciate it if you checked out my blog, natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot blogspot dot com. Uh, I, this video is going to end up as part of a big post on making comics over there. Um, I review all sorts of art supplies. I do all sorts of tutorials. So if you're interested in making comics, you should definitely check out my blog. And hey, give me a shout out on Twitter if you like what I do. It's NatoSoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P. Uh, same goes for Instagram. Uh, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a suggestion, and share it with your friends. Have a good day, guys. Bye.